from Car Rigs and Ingram, this is It Figures, the CRI podcast, an accounting, advisory, and industry focused podcast for business and organization leaders, entrepreneurs, and anyone who is looking to go beyond the status quo. Welcome. I'm Rob DeMunbrand. I'm a partner at Car Rigs and Ingram in the financial institutions area and I've been in practice 25 years and with servicing financial institutions uh, of all different sizes, all different type of services, uh, from a test function to risk management services, primarily right now focusing on uh, risk management services. I'm joined today by Doug Mims, one of my partners. And Doug, I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay, thanks, Rob. I'm Doug Mims. I'm a financial institutions partner, one of our industry line leaders. I'm I'm in the Atlanta office of, of CRI. I've been in practice for 30 years, uh, auditing banks and credit unions. Uh, started my career at PwC, been with our firm for 20 years, and spend most of my time in, in the internal audit space, if you will, the advisory space. Uh, still do some assurance work, but primarily work in, in internal audit and providing uh outsourced and co-sourced services to our community bank and credit union clients. Great, Doug. So this morning, we have a, a very timely uh, topic we're going to talk about. You know, right now with the COVID-19 virus going around and, and a lot of banks and financial institutions instituting their pandemic plans, things are a lot different uh, than they were three weeks ago even. So it's changed a lot of the functions within our financial institutions. Today, we're going to talk about internal audit, the internal audit function. And, and what does that look like now uh, as we go into this, this new time where markets are, are definitely crazy right now, businesses are struggling, uh, financial institutions are, are providing assistance to their communities, trying to support the economy, uh, implementing things with the government stimulus. So it is a it's a busy time for financial institutions, and and it's an all hands on deck approach right now. Um, internal audit may not be functioning as internal audit was functioning before. So as we look at the internal audit function specifically of a financial institution. We want to step back and and reevaluate the whole plan uh, of how that's going to look going forward. So as we do that, Doug, I want you to talk a little bit about the audit universe now. What does that look like? Well, I think if you if you kind of uh, back up just a little bit into some of the things you were mentioning, you know, kind of been all hands on deck, and so I'm sure that at community banks, uh, depending on the size and complexity, there our internal audit brethren, if you will, have been focused on probably doing whatever needed to be done to help the institution uh, execute the pandemic plan. And so after this roughly three week period, it's, it's you know, kind of time to assess, you know, what is the new normal, uh, not knowing how long we're going to be in this remote work environment. And, you know, one of the first things that comes to mind is audit universe. What uh, has the audit universe changed? You know, most of the time, if you think audit universe and an actual change in, in universe in terms of introducing new auditable units or components of auditable units, it usually uh, centers around, well, did we have we done an acquisition? Um, have we gotten into a new line of business? Is this service uh, grown to the point that it is a separate auditable unit? Those type of things. But in this environment, I think you need to step back and you know maybe not just say, hey, has have my has my audit universe changed? But is there a component in my audit universe that I previously haven't recognized? So that's a thought process. Or um, within our existing audit universe, is there a sub process or a component of an existing unit that maybe you know poses a, a, a higher degree of risk than it previously did, or is more relevant than it used to be, and maybe it needs to be factored in uh, to to your audit universe. You know, and that's a that's a great point because the audit universe sometimes will get stale with that, and sometimes it takes situations to change our way of thinking of of what is that universe. And kind of dovetailing into the next section about this, I'd like to talk about risk assessments because I know as internal audit functions talk about risk assessments uh, internally and with their their audit committees, you know, we're always making the point to mention that that. Risk assessments are fluid documents that they they should always be 
uh, annually reassessed, and even during, during the course of an audit period, they should be uh, looked at, updated as necessary. And there is no better time than right now to be doing that. So why don't you talk to me a little bit about, about going through and reevaluating risk assessments? Well, a lot of times when we do risk assessment, no matter whether it's an internal audit risk assessment or other, we have, you know, the, the old handy dandy heat map and we throw it up and, and take a look at, you know, where, where's, where are the high risk items and the moderate risk items and, and things of that nature. I, I'd, I'd step back a little bit and say, you know, who had this on their heat map? You know, nobody. And, and so uh, if, if you're an audit shop and, and you did your risk assessment timely and you did it uh, in the latter part of last year or the very first part of this year, uh, the risk profile of your your uh, institution may very well have changed. It may have changed in a significant way. So I think it's, uh, you know, similar to the audit universe, I think it's appropriate to revisit your risk assessment. Uh, and I think it really comes in a couple of ways. So you, you, you immediately think inherent risk, right? I mean, what what has changed about inherent risk in this environment? Do I have more external risk than I would have ever thought about? So that's, you know, that's a thought process. Has there been changes in, in, in inherent risk? But then similarly, you know, has control risk changed? So when you think about controls in this environment and going to a remote environment, are there controls that can no longer be executed in a given audit area? Can they no longer be executed? And do you have to look at compensating controls? Or can you essentially execute that control, but you can't document it the way you used to? So you need to evaluate the control to determine how you're going to evidence that it was executed. Um, similarly, controls could go away. So there's a, a variety of things, you know, a couple, couple things in this environment you think about uh, in, in that context. I mean, you know, looking at the, the guidance that came out recently regarding TDRs and where the, the, the regulatory uh, folks said, hey, be lenient, uh, work with your customer. If it's six months, you know, that's that's considered insignificant and and you can defer a loan payment for six months and you do not have to treat it as a tdr we got the fasb on board uh then congress came in and jumped on board and said yes if that wasn't good enough we're going to put it in a law that you don't have to comply with tdrs but at the same time think about that process so there's a process where the bank has to develop a program right about how are we going to do this from a from a customer facing standpoint? So that program, you know, there's some controls and processes in there. Um, the program, and then and then actually, when you defer the payment, how mechanically does that work? So the external factor that came in, we didn't come up with that idea. It, it, it was it came in this Corona environment, and it comes to us, and now we've got to put controls and processes in place to address it, and. How do you how do you take that payment? Do you tack it on? Do you extend the maturity date? Uh, do you do you just create a bit of a balloon on the back end? And then when you do receive payments subsequently after the deferral, how do those payments get posted? Well, for most systems, that's a bit of a manual process and how you treat the interest and those type of things. So it, it and if you think about how much volume there will be of that, you could have a scenario where you've got a historically a automated process that is now a manual process. So a little bit long winded there, Rob, but, but there's certainly the, the dynamics of this environment can change both inherent and control risk. And, and we need to revisit our risk assessments because I think without question, um, if, if someone did their risk assessment in January, something's going to look different. And, and even if you come to the same inherent and control risk, um, your directional indicator, if, if you have that built into your process, certainly your directional indicator uh, would need to be revisited as well. So it's uh, quite the dynamic time from the risk assessment perspective. And I think that's the important thing to remember as we're talking about risk assessments. And as you were mentioning, you know, you just talked about one one area and, and information's coming out almost endlessly and, and, and all the time now. And so Thinking through that from a risk assessment standpoint is so important uh, with just the volume of information that we have right now. Well, one of you and I have been dealing with the SBA piece is another one. Right. You know, that I just, you're right. I just focused on one. I mean, this the uh, 
the programs that are being rolled rolled out, uh, banks and credit unions are the distribution channel for that. That creates both uh, inherent and control risk, possibly, uh, for an institution. And um, gosh, I mean, think about branches. I mean, branch, you know, branches converting from, you know, in a different environment, closing the the lobby and and going exclusively drive through. Think about this one, though, Rob. What if you don't have a drive through? Right. What, what processes are you going to put in place because you still have to serve your customer and, and remain open? So how, what are you going to do to protect your employees and protect your data and protect your physical assets? So lots of unique scenarios you could run through. And, you know, you and I are auditor types. So we probably we think about the things we audit. Uh, if, if you're a if you're a banker or an operations person in a bank, you could probably think of 10,000 other things that uh, you and I might not think about. You know, and a lot of the, some of the things you've just mentioned, Doug, those are things that have have already happened, and we're we're still definitely right in the middle of this. So there will be more that will happen, and and that we'll have to factor into these risk assessments. So as we're we're talking about the risk assessments, obviously, as we go through risk assessments in normal times, uh, what comes from those risk assessments are detailed audit plans to focus on the risks that we've assessed in our universe. So thinking through that now, maybe talk a little bit about audit plans. What does that, what does that look like now? How, what do we need to be doing there? Well, if you think about, you know, the, the, the audit plan is a byproduct of the risk assessment. And, and when you think risk assessment audit plan, you think of them working in concert. The, the sole purpose of doing the risk assessment and audit plan is to determine where you're gonna deploy audit resource. But also something we sometimes don't think about, or if we do, we don't say it out loud, is those are limited resources. We have X FTEs if we're an internal audit department. We have X amount of money that we've budgeted for to spend. Um, and, and, and so with that, you, you're trying to prioritize where you allocate your resource. So in this environment, if your risk assessment, if your audit universe changes, and or your risk assessment changes, then you would conceivably modify your audit plan. But it may be that some things that are actually in your plan would go away this year. They might actually, so in a prioritization of focusing on risk, focusing on your greatest areas of risk, you might actually identify something that wasn't identified before. And the, and the trade-off is we need to focus on that area in this cycle and other areas or an area or areas would push to another cycle. So it's an, it's a prioritization uh, coming out of the risk, risk, uh, risk assessment that could impact your plan. And let's face it. I mean, Rob, you know, with the, with our client base, uh, we do, we work with some small banks, we work with some small credit unions, you know, the level of, of automation, the level of, of, you know, imaging and other things. Uh, there, there are smaller institutions that are maybe, uh, not as advanced in that realm as others. And, and so if you're looking at a remote environment and you're auditing in a remote environment, there may be audits you just can't do. And so um, hopefully those are either low risk or moderate risk areas and you can focus on the areas of greatest risk. Greatest risk. But, um, you know, it, it, it's going to be interesting because you, you have to address w- what you can in the short term. You can't just abandon everything because you don't want to come on the other side of this this uh, social distancing. And it's July the 1st and uh, you hadn't audited anything in the last you know two or three months. And now you've got to you know execute an annual audit plan in six months. Well, that that's not going to work for anybody and it's not going to work for you or your auditees. So you got to be thinking, thinking forward, pressing forward with the plan but with an eye that, hey, if risk has changed, there's different priorities. Which is definitely right now something that's that uh, we have to think about because and that's a challenge because historically, uh, you know, it's been more of a here's our audit plan and you carry it out throughout the throughout the year. And, and that's what you do. But having that flexibility right now, to, as you said, reprioritize um areas, reprioritize timing. That's all so important right now as we go through this this period of time. And, you know, another thing to think about as we're, we're going through this is, you know, internal audit is a mon- monitoring function. So we're definitely monitoring the operations and financial reporting of the 
of the financial institution. Uh, we are in the background a lot of times. So dealing with dealing with your auditees, dealing with clients, um, you know, it's a disruptive time right now, just in general, the overall economy, the overall uh, environment that we in, how are we are in, how can we as internal auditors uh, help in, uh, I guess, easing the disruption that we cause? How can we do that? Well, you know, there's business disruption is, is, um, you know, upon us, if you will. And so the, the bank is, is uh, experiencing a substantial business disruption. Even if, uh, even if things are going reasonably well, it's still not business as usual. So there's a business disruption there. Uh, no, matter, no matter how well we plan, no matter how good of a request list we send and how far in advance that we send it, no matter whether we're on site or off site, uh, we are a business disruption. We, we disrupt people's normal day to day. Uh, someone who's in operations or otherwise, when we're doing an audit area, uh, they have more tasks to do when we're around. So, so we're, all, we're, we're by definition, we're a business disruption, no matter how good of a job we do. So in this environment, I think that's just magnified. And I think we need to be mindful of that. And as we look at them, I'm, I'm working on a risk assessment. I have two risk assessments ongoing right now, one with a smaller community bank, one with a larger community bank. Um, and we're looking at, at, at you know, we've, we've built these things into the plans. We're, we're looking at the audit universe. We're looking at the risk assessment and, as it, and, and, and the audit plan. But we're looking at, OK, from a disruption standpoint, uh, there's a couple of audits that we had, you know, that we in our preliminaries that we had in certain uh, in certain windows that just aren't going to work and they're not going to work because of this business disruption and because of the, of the disruption that we would cause. So we just need to be hypersensitive to the fact that our normal is as nice as we are. Our normal level of disruption is magnified in this environment and we need to be mindful of that. And we also probably need to consider that in terms of timeliness and other things, because quite frankly, Robin, it's hard to be efficient in this environment right now. Definitely. And Doug, you're right. I mean, definitely being being considerate of, of the auditee is very important right now because, you know, just trying to operate is difficult, much less having it audited. So being mindful of that as 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 internal auditors, taking that into consideration as we're we are creating request lists, we're asking for information. It's important to keep that in mind that there's a there's a lot going on that's that's a lot more than internal audit. Internal audit's definitely important and still important, but but it's something we need to be uh, we need to adapt to the current circumstances that we're in, and, and 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 that's something to think about. And you know what's causing a lot of disruption too, and we talked about it a little earlier as we were talking about risk assessments is is just the amount of information that's coming out, uh, the regulatory information, whether it's from the, the regulators, whether it's from FASB, whether it's from the government, whatever it is, there's a lot of a lot of information coming out on that. So uh, what would we suggest that internal auditors need to be doing about that? How do they need to be staying current? Well, you know, I think internal auditors that are employed by financial institutions, they need to be doing the same thing we're doing, which is they need to keep their eyes open and their ears open. And so uh, within our industry line, as you know, Rob, I mean, we're all keeping our eyes and ears open. We're sharing information. There's a lot of what's coming out from the banking and credit union regulators that, while relevant to our clients, is not directly relevant to what we do. So we need to be mindful of that, but we don't need to focus on it. But if you look at some of the things that have come out recently, including the FFIC guidance I alluded to earlier on, on troubled debt restructurings, uh, the, the SAFE Act, the actual bill included other things that, that relate to banking. And in addition to the TDRs, they... They muddied the Cecil water for us, uh, for, for, you know, the, the largest issuers and, um, you know, change some things about capital ratios. And so uh, we've got to be have our eyes and ears open, be looking for that information, try to try to sift through to what matters to us. Maybe some things that come through that we want to share with our employer or in our case, the, the you know, banks and credit unions we serve. But we just need to be uh be focused. And, you know, the other thing that uh, certainly we, we have um, as of late is, you know, the regulatory uh, process is going to be different. So just as our audit schedules are being impacted, 
examination schedules are going to be impacted. So I fully expect, and I am seeing where examinations are being deferred, uh, or they're going to offsite, or they were going to look at three areas, and now they're going to look at two in the same time they originally planned. But one of those they're going to defer to next year. So there, that, in it, you know, as we, <laughs> I mean, it, all, it almost uh, comes down to everything we've already talked about, including disruption. Is we need to be mindful that the regulators are going to change their plans, which is going to impact our auditees, which impacts us. So, in addition to making sure we're top of mind. The regulatory considerations factor into everything else uh, that we've talked about today. Yeah, definitely. And that definitely requires diligence on our part to be uh, mindful of what's out there. And like you said, and I think it's a very good point is, is making sure that we, we get the important information that we dig through the information to find out what is important to our institution and to our client and be able to, to, to go with that. And because there is such a, such a deluge of information right now. Deciphering is, is difficult, but something we need to be doing. And one of the most important things through all of this, um, as we come to an end, is communication, communicating with stakeholders, with the audit committee, with the board, with management. Let's talk a bit, little bit about, about what that looks like right now. Well, I think proactive communication is important always. Internally, externally, doesn't matter. I, and, and I think we all probably could improve in that area in, in a variety of ways. So, but I think in this, this remote scenario that it's, it's probably has heightened importance. And I think this very, this can vary by institution. It can, and, and some of that would be based on their culture. It also can be impacted by the size of the institution and, and that, that can factor into the level of communication. But I think we need to be, be thinking about if, you know, do we, who do we need to be com communicating with and how often do we need to, uh, you know, communicate with the board? Do we need to communicate with the audit committee of the board? Do we need to be communicating with executive management about our, about the audit plan and all these other things we talked about? I think, again, it comes back to the institution. I think it comes back in part to their culture. And I think that in this remote environment, in the, you know, going back to the spirit of the all hands on deck, we might have to insert ourselves a little bit, right? We might have to say, hey, don't forget about the audit plan and let's confirm that this is what we're going to try to do and this is how we're going to try to achieve it. And so I'm doing that as an external provider, quite frankly. I've been reaching out to my clients proactively, trying to make sure that previously identified audits are still still uh, you know, on schedule and just make sure that we're having an appropriate conversation. And quite frankly, particularly if you're a, a internal auditor at a bank, if you're the chief audit executive, um, you know, you may need to have a direct dialogue with the regulators about what you're doing with your audit plan and make sure you understand their expectations so that you can do your best for your institution. Definitely. And that is that is so important that we do that. And, and, and now as we're closing up, um, you know, we have a lot of a lot of challenges uh, because of this uh, COVID-19 uh, virus, a lot of challenges uh, that we're facing, a lot of difficulties going on. But there's a great opportunity right now for internal auditors to help lead their organizations as we're going through this. So I think if I could interject just one last point that, ahead, that uh, we, I wanted to mention, you know, if obviously, you know, you've mentioned monitoring several times and, you know, if, if you can automate processes in lieu of, you know, physical audits, if you will, if there's things that you can, if you have the software and you can, you know, extract data and do some analytics, that would, you know, that certainly should be a consideration. If you've been in the implement, you know, the, uh, I guess the, the testing phase, if you will, and you haven't implemented that analytics yet, certainly now might be a good time to do it. Now, if you, if you're, if you're not anywhere on that grid and, uh, or that continuum and you haven't started and you don't have plans in place, it'd be hard to implement them now. But, but certainly as part of this whole picture, whether it's whether it's audit universe, risk assessment, audit plan, communication, all these things, um, you know, be mindful of, of how, uh, I guess, uh, less invasive, but yet potentially effective uh, and some some good data analytics could be right now. 
Absolutely. That's great advice. And Doug, I want to thank you for sharing your, your views today and your ideas as we, as we close up here. And, and just as a reminder, internal audit is a, is a necessary function. It can be a very valuable function right now in the environment that we're in. We need to be flexible. We need to be mindful of, of our auditees. We need to be on top of information that's coming out. So there's a lot of room, of, a lot of opportunity for internal auditors right now. A lot and of opportunities to lead right now, Rob, to be leaders. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, I appreciate everybody uh, listening in today. And I uh, thank you for uh, listening to the It Figures podcast. If you want more CRI insights or are interested in learning about our firm, please visit our website at CRICPA.com. Thanks for listening to this episode of It Figures, the CRI podcast. You can subscribe to It Figures on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you prefer to listen to your podcasts. If you liked what you heard today, please leave us a review.